And now an update on the 32-bit rearm board. A couple of weeks ago we did a Marlin 2.0 32-bit install on a rearm board. And during that install I was having issues getting the LCD display to work. Well it turns out there's a few extra things that you need to do to get the LCD screens to work on a rearm. Now I did figure out how to do the 2004 display like this one and the full graphics riprap display. So I thought I'd take a minute to show you how I did it. See what I did there? Adding the riprap full graphics display was pretty straightforward. All you have to have is a cable that has the 5 volt pin broke out. Most vendors that sell these rearm boards will even include this cable. If you want to make one of these yourself, all you really need to do is clip the wire that's furthest away from the red wire, the one on the other side, and put a DuPont connector on the end of it. You might be able to crimp one on here, but this wire is 28 gauge and pretty small, so you might have to solder that connection on. There's a couple of different 5 volt pins that you could use down here on the rearm, but I'm going to use this one in the bottom left corner. So your 5 volt pin will go right there, and then your LCD smart adapter can go on just like any other ramps board. Your EXP1 connector can go over here on the right. Remember, red wire goes to the number one pin, so like this. And then your EXP2 connector will be unmodified. Again, red wire on the number one pin. And then in Marlin, you just make the usual changes. So we'll uncomment, riprap, discount, full graphic smart controller. And then if you want to use the SD card on that smart controller, we have to make one change to the pins file. So let's open up the pins folder, go all the way down to that rearm board, rampsrearm.h, and then scroll down to the bottom of this file, and then you'll come down to these options. By default, Marlin is going to try to use the onboard SD card that's on the rearm board. So let's comment that out, and we'll uncomment the one above it. This will allow your printer to use the files that are on the SD card that are connected to the smart controller. And if you still have everything set up correctly like in the last video and you're connected up USB and your SD card from the rearm board is being read correctly in Windows Explorer, all you have to do is hit upload. It's going to ask you if you want to save the build, we do, and it's going to upload that to the SD card. When the upload's complete, just power off your printer, power it back on, and your screen should now be available. I know that's kind of hard to see because there's a lot of glare, but it is working. Now the 2004 type screen, like I use on Log, it's a little harder, but still doable. We have to add a few wires. So you're still going to need your cable with your breakout 5 volt line, but we're also going to have to add a few wires to our smart adapter so that we can connect it to some pins on the rearm board. We're going to add three wires to pins 6, 7, and 8. That's pin number four, five, and six, if you're going from left to right here in this image. I'm just going to solder these wires onto that adapter with this DuPont connector on the other side. Just make sure they go in order six, seven, eight. It doesn't matter which one, you can flip the plug if you need to. Our connector's been soldered on our adapter. We can put our five volt pin back on, right there. Put our adapter back on. And the new cable you made goes on this side in the front row. Just skip one pin. And it needs to go 6, 7, and 8. So you skip one pin, 6, 7, 8. Put your breakout cable on EXP1. Red wire to first pin. Put the other cable on EXP2. Red wire first pin. Cable up your LCD. EXP1, EXP2. Then back into Marlin, we'll comment out the full graphics display. We'll scroll up and we'll uncomment Riprap Discount Smart Controller. Everything else should stay the same. If you did this option like I showed you before, it will allow you to use the SD card on that smart controller. Turn the printer on, and then hit upload. Once the upload is complete, turn the printer off. Turn it back on. And your screen should be working just like it did before. And with this fix, Log is back to normal. And that's it, Log is as good as new, or as good as it ever was anyway. A big thanks to Scott Latin, the keeper of Marlin, for pointing me in the right direction. And all the people that post on the Marlin forums that gave me all the info I needed to get this resolved. If you liked this video or you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.